टी एंड कॉफी हैव निकोटीन इज इट हराम वाई और वाई नॉट निकोटीन इज ए सब्सटेंस प्रेजेंस इन सिगरेट टबैको दैट कैन लीड टू अ लॉट ऑफ डिजीज जजाक खैर द क्वेश्चन आस्ट बाई सिस्ट आयश ऑफ पाकिस्तान इज दैट टी कंटेन्स निकोटीन एंड निकोटीन इज देयर इन in cigarettes etc and cause many disease so is having tea haram or halal before i reply to this question i would like to tell the sister and the audience that you will be shocked to know that many vegetables also have nicotine even potato have nicotine even tomato has nicotine even eggplant brinjal has nicotine even cauliflower has nicotine so question should have been that is having tomato or potato or cauliflower or brinjal haram or halal anyway you need not be so shocked as far as ruling is concerned that smoking cigarette is 100% haram there are many scholars and i've given a lecture on that and my answer is long so i won't repeat into why cigarette smoking is haram but there are more than 400 fatwas that tobacco and smoking cigarette is haram and according to world health organization more than 6 million people die every year only because of smoking cigarette so there's no doubt even whether you're muslim or non muslim they agree that smoking is injurious to health and that's the reason almost all the country that's compulsory that even if they sell cigarettes it's mentioned there that smoking cigarette injurious to health so i won't go into the details of why it's haram you can listen to my answer why smoking is haram we'll come to the main question that if nicotine is then tobacco and tobacco is mainly where we smoke cigarettes so if that is haram is tea haram as far as nicotine is concerned nicotine is present in the tobacco and tobacco is used for smoking which is haram undoubtedly nicotine is also present in tea potatoes tomatoes brinjal cauliflower but the point to be noted is it is present in trace amounts negligible amount as compared to tobacco when you smoke a cigarette one cigarette when you smoke it contains about 10 mg of nicotine and when you smoke a cigarette about 2 mg on every cigarette not too big not too small an every cigarette 2 mg of nicotine is inhaled as far as tea is concerned in tea in 1 g of tea depending upon the type of tea if it's a regular tea it contains 285 nanograms of nicotine that is less than 3 micrograms of nicotine that is 0.000285 grams in 1 gram of tea and 1 gram of tea is about half teaspoon so percentage wise it will be 0.000285% which is negligible means it will be negligible zero to up to 285 nanograms that means negligible if it is black tea it may be up to 100 nanograms that is 1 1 micrograms 0.00001 gram in percentage wise 0.0001% which is negligible so the nicotine that is there in tea or whether it be the vegetables i have named it is not haram because number 1 it is in trace amounts it is negligible for example brinjal brinjal it said that when you have brinjal if you have 20 kilos of brinjal then that will be equivalent to somewhat one cigarette smoking when you smoke a cigarette 
2 milligrams of nicotine, you will require 20 kilos. Now, I don't know, you, mean you can eat 20 kilos together. So point number one, it's, and brinjal is one of the uh, uh, vegetables which is higher than tomato and potato is much less. All these are trace amounts. So number one point to be noted that why it is not haram? Because it's available in trace amounts. Number two, that tea, when you boil tea for five minutes, approximately 50% only get dissolved into the tea you have. So as it is it's then trace amount, if you boil for five minutes, maximum 50% get dissolved, number two. Number three, the absorption of nicotine into the body with tea or with the vegetables I told is completely different than smoking a cigarette. When you smoke a cigarette, in 10 to 20 seconds, that nicotine, it reaches the brain. Immediately, when you take a puff, within 10 to 20 seconds, the smoke goes into the lung, and from the lung, it reaches the brain in 10 to 20 seconds, on average. When you have tea, depending upon the amount of tea you have, and the quantity, and the type of tea, on average, if you have one cup of maybe 250 ml, a large glass of tea, it takes 45 minutes for the tea to go from your stomach into the intestine. So by the time it's absorbed, it takes too long. This is point number three. Point number four, the nicotine that you have in tea or the vegetables, it is not addictive. Whereas the nicotine by smoking, it reaches the brain immediately and is addictive. So based on these four scientific reasons that it is available in trace amounts, even if it, the absorption of the tea in the water is less than 50%, number, number three is that the way it is absorbed is different than smoking, where the nicotine goes directly into the brain. And number four, the nicotine in tea is not addictive. And even the nicotine that is there in the potato and in the, and in the tomato, in the brinjal, in the cauliflower, all are in trace amounts. It is not addictive at all. It is not harmful for health at all. No scientific research has ever told that the nicotine present in the potato or in the cauliflower or in the tea is harmful. Yes, if you have anything excessively, that's a different thing. So what is harmful that if you have tea along with sugar and if you have diabetes, then the doctor said don't have tea, but they say no problem in have, having black tea or having tea without milk. So milk having excessive if you have certain diseases or having sugar, sugar is good for health, but if you have diabetes, it's not good. So if you have diabetes, doctor tells not to have tea, not because of the nicotine, because of the sugar. But tea per se is totally halal, it's not addictive, there are no health problems as far as nicotine is concerned. Hope that answers the question. Therefore, it's not haram, it's perfectly halal. And if there are stimulants in tea or in coffee when you have, it keeps you awake and that is good and permissible, it's not addictive. Hope that answers the question.